not something you get to keep. They are something you have to fight to maintain. And you have to, more than anything else, you have to fight yourself. I have to fight myself to maintain those requirements. I can tell you that 10 years ago, I knew a lot less about the Qur'an. As the days and the months and the years went by, I knew more and more and more about the Qur'an. And even though in the grand scheme of things, I still know very little about the Qur'an, those original requirements that are psychological in nature, I still have to struggle with those every day. I have to struggle with those. It's not like I graduated and I met those requirements. Like, you know, you take prerequisites in college, you meet the prerequisite and that's it. You don't have to go back to it anymore. It's not the case with Qur'an. These, these requirements, they are, they're of a different nature. And the first of those requirements is understanding and reminding oneself every single time, why am I learning this? Why am I reading tafsir? Why am I learning Arabic? Why am I memorizing these ayat? What is the point of all of this? The intention behind all of this? And all of you know the cliche answer, and the cliche answer is, this is so I can have guidance. This is so I can have guidance. That's the, you know, Quran is guidance. We study it for guidance. But that term is used so often that we actually don't understand what that really means. What does it mean that I'm asking Allah for guidance? What that means is that on a given day, every single moment of my day, I will be presented with choices. Should I stay in bed or should I wake up? Should I look there or should I look down? Should I talk back or should I stay quiet? Should I earn my money this way or should I find another job? Should I pursue this or should I leave those friends? Should I hang out with them or should I not hang out? Should I respond back to the text message or not? Choices, all the time, every second of the day, you and I are gonna be faced with choices. When we ask Allah for guidance, we are asking Allah for the strength to make the right choices. That Allah empowers us because of His word to make the right choices. Guidance of the Quran, that's what that means. That's what that means. And I tell you, when you are ready and you're strong enough to make the right choice, like for example, I'll tell you an example, there are many sisters, for example, I'm not picking on sisters, relax, okay, calm down. But, sister came up to me and said, I, you know, I want to wear the hijab, but I can't. I'm not ready yet. And I said, you have to tell me what that means. I, I, I'm trying to understand what does it mean when you say, you're not ready yet. I'm not belittling your concern, I just want to understand. And she said something like, I feel like I'm not a good enough person and if you wear hijab, everybody thinks you're a good person. And I don't want to give the impression that I'm such a righteous person. I want to be who I really am. So when I'm a better person, then I'm gonna wear it. And I said, there is not going to ever come a day in your life that you will wake up and look in the mirror and say, hey, I'm a good person today. Finally, I've been waiting all this time to become a better person. Because that would mean you're self-righteous. And self-righteous people are the worst kinds of people. <laughs> You and I will never be good enough. We're never gonna be good enough to obey Allah. You still have to do it. If you're convinced it's something you have to do, you can't put it off. Why am I bringing this up now? Because guidance. If you accept this book as guidance, if I accept this book as guidance, you know what that necessarily means? That necessarily means I'm gonna have to change the way I make my choices. I am used to making bad choices. Get used to it, I just do it all the time. So I don't even think twice about it. I even start telling myself what shaitan keeps telling me. I start telling myself, what's the big deal? You're messed up anyway, but at least you do some other good things. Your good deeds should compensate for these bad things. Just do it, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Why, why are you so hard on yourself? Or the shaitan comes and tells you, you're messed up anyway, might as well just go, you know, die partying. I mean, you're gonna burn anyway, so might as well live it up for the little time you have left. And you start telling yourself that. Shaitan tells you that enough times that he leaves you on autopilot and now you can tell yourself. He's not even doing waswasa to you anymore, you are enough to do waswasa to yourself. That's what happens to some people. That is why we have to recite the Qur'an and reflect on the Qur'an regularly to fight those temptations, to fight those inclinations, to fight those voices inside us that lead us to failure, that lead me to failure and lead you to failure. And it doesn't matter if you're a student of knowledge, it doesn't matter if you're a scholar, a teacher, a student, an expert, a novice, doesn't matter. This will happen to all of us. This is going to happen to all of us. The color of your hijab doesn't matter, the size of your beard doesn't matter. Your age doesn't matter. Shaitan will not spare any of us. He will come.
and Allah offers us His protection. We recite Quran and we say, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim You're gonna recite Quran, seek Allah's refuge from shaitan. Two reasons for that. One, if you don't seek refuge of Allah, of Allah from shaitan, while you're reciting Quran, He will mess up your reading of the Quran. He will put waswasa in it. He'll distract you. You won't get the benefit you need to get. Two, one of the reasons you should recite the Quran is to get protection against shaitan. It is why Allah gave you this book. The actual relationship I have with the Quran is not when I'm listening to a lecture. Is not when I'm, you know, when I'm memorizing. You know when the actual relationship I have with the Quran happens? When I'm standing in salat and reciting it. When I'm standing in salat and I'm listening to it being recited. The relationship we have with the Quran happens five times a day at least. That is, if somebody's salat is good, their Quran is good. And if somebody is not engaging with the Qur'an in their salat, then their relationship with the Qur'an is entirely artificial. It means nothing. It is an entirely academic exercise and a superficial exercise. Real Qur'an happens in salat. Everything I learn, everything you learn about this book, whether it's its tajweed, or its language, or its tafsir, or memorizing its ayat, all of it boils down to, I will have a better salat. I will have better salat. If I will not have better salat, all of this is in vain. None of it matters. Because Salat is officially when you stop talking to everybody else and I start talking to Allah. And I start talking to Allah in words that He taught me, that He taught you. That's the conversation. That's the conversation that matters. No, no, nothing else in life, everything else in life is in vain. If this isn't in place.